All right, here we have the new controller. Um, I admit it probably doesn't look much at the moment, but uh, when it's finished, it'll be quite compact and, um, yeah, more than usable. You just need to give me some sort of mounting dimensions. But anyway, let's start. Let's control. Okay, we've got A, which is forward. B, which is reverse. Now, we've got two modes we can run it in. We can either run it in um, like a, a momentary mode, where you push it, the motor runs for a little bit, and then stops. Or, I can have it set up as a, a latching mode, which means you push the button and the motor will just keep going and going and going until it either, well, hits the limit switch or it goes over current, whichever comes first. Obviously, in your case, it'll hit the limit switch. But just in case it doesn't hit the limit switch, you've got that safety factor, which cuts it out if there's too much current. Now, with the current, that red light indicates everything's okay. Now, did you notice it just went off and then faded back in? That's basically the motor's running. Now, as I load the motor up, the current goes higher than what's allowable. It can be set via this trim pot or this pot here on the version you get. I'm not sure. It may be a potentiometer or it may be a trim pot. Um, we can sort of nut out those finer details later. So anyway, we've got the motor going. Something happens. It'll shut out. So the current's adjustable up to about 30 amps, which is where I see the unit probably being at its maximum. Um, so that gives plenty of leeway, and uh, obviously it's much better than the Chinese one. Now we've Im implemented rolling codes on the, um, the control. So while well, we've got this control, we've got A and B. A is forward, B is reverse, C is stop. So um, if the control is moving forward and we push C or D, it stops. Both C and D are wired to stop buttons. So as soon as you push either of these two, C or D, the unit will come to a stop. Now, the rolling code works. We can, we've programmed that one. Okay, here we've got one that is just a general, generic unit. All the controls have key lock loaded into them. So, there's something like 65 million possible combinations. So the chance of getting one that's the same is, uh, well, you've probably got better odds of winning the lotto. Now, we see it won't work. Another one here. We see it won't work. No response from the control whatsoever because it's uh, locked out. Now, training it is just a simple matter of pushing a small button on the board. Push a button on here, any button. And suddenly we've got a second controller. Now, each each controller, that's two controllers, that's three controllers. Each control board can have up to six individual controls. So, um, we can control from different ones at the same time. So, no problems there. I've only allowed six because I can't see any possibility that you'd need more. Now, I've showed you the current limiting. Um, we can also adjust the speed. Now, we can have it either the motor going off, on, off, on, off, on, or from zero to maximum speed. And I'll just show you that now. So, as you saw just then, we had the pulsing mode, we had the, um, yeah, all the modes in place and whatnot. Now, the limit switches. I've put logic on the limit switches. So, for example, if we're going forward, which is the A button, and it hits the limit switch on the, the other side, while the limit switch is depressed, 
we can't go any further this is just some logic to protect the battery and obviously the motor in case it tries to push against the the far limit so we can't do that so that's locked out from the forward button once that limit switch is pressed but we can press the reverse button which means it'll keep going until limit switch is pressed then we can't reverse any further because it's not going to let us but we can go forward again until we hit the limit switch then we can't do anything except go backwards when the backward switch is, is pressed we can't go any further backwards all we can go is forwards um, the unit at the moment is um, on this perf ball, this, this breadboard, it's probably capable of um, up to about probably 36 volt maximum input um, it has MOSFET drivers, it uses a key lock algorithm for the code, the rolling codes uh, we can have it momentary or we can have it set, it's got logic to protect it from overdriving and anything that should go wrong, the current limits active from about zero all the way up to 30 amps and uh, yeah if you don't have the remote, right remote control you can't use it as long as the LED is on everything's okay that's basically an indicator to tell us that there's no serious problems if something happens to the motor and uh, the unit won't run then it will just continuously it'll try every probably three or four seconds um, I'll show you here, it'll, it'll attempt to run, so we've got current, won't let us do it. Now it'll try for a second. Now each time it encounters a problem with the motor, it'll just stop. Won't let us go any further while there's something wrong. So um, we have all the protection, we have everything in place. And... Uh, and that about covers it. I'll um, I'll probably build the board uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I've got to um, put this all into a schematic now so I can uh, follow it and make sure everything's a hundred percent. I've been testing it for the last couple of hours um, and no problems at all. Everything functions as it should. I've tried some different motors with it. Everything seems to work perfectly. The unit runs at about 6 kilohertz, which is um, pretty good switching speed for a motor. And, uh, yeah, no heat issues, no dramas. That's pretty much it.